G'day. Uh, today I'm doing a teardown on a, a King Seiko 44 movement, uh, 4402. And uh, I'm just going to get straight into it. So the first thing I'm going to take off there is the ratchet wheel. And I've just taken the screw off there. And now I'm just working out the best way to take off the wheel. And we're just going to take that off gently. These are quite highly polished, which you can see there. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to take off the intermediate winding wheel, which has a right-handed thread. So you've got to turn it the opposite way to what you would a normal, a normal screw. And if you try to turn it the other way, you'll tighten it up and then crack the screw off. So we're just taking off the actual screw there. And then we'll take off the wheel itself. I'm actually going to leave the click on the bridge and take that off on camera because it's quite difficult to do while on camera and uh, it's got a little spring under there and I don't really want to lose it. So just coming back now, I'm just having a look and working out the strategy for what I'm going to take off next. And I've decided that I'm going to take off the balance and the reason I'm going to do that or technically the whole balance assembly. The reason I'm going to do that now is that they're very easy to damage and um, I'd rather have that off than uh, flopping around while I take anything else off. So I'm just taking the two screws off of the balance cock there. And once they're out, you'll be able to lift the, well, I'll be able to lift off the whole thing as an assembly. I'm going to remove the shock protector jewel uh, probably off camera because it's a little bit tricky to do and it, it's fairly difficult to work on camera. So um, I'd be sort of much happier doing, doing that off camera where I've got a bit more control over what's going on. So there I'm just having a look at the bridge and just working out the best way to take it off. And I'm going to pick it up from the wheel end. There we go. And just trying to be very careful with that because it's quite delicate. And I've just put that aside and we're coming back to the movement again. And I'm just deciding what to take off next. And I've decided to take off the pallet fork and the pallet fork bridge or the pallet fork bridge. And um, there we go. So that's the first screw there, and then the second screw. And I'm just going to carefully take those off. Now when I um, actually undo the screws, I'm fairly gentle with them and um, just take them up to a point where there's, I try to get the head high enough so that I can pick up the threaded part with the with the tweezers and there's two reasons for that firstly i don't want to scratch the top of the head and secondly it's pretty hard for the screw to to vanish if you pick it up that way then i'm just picking up the pallet fork there <clears throat> and i'm going to take off the train bridge next so that's held on i think with two screws there that's the first one. Now you'll see on the top of the pallet bridge there, it's got three die fix jewels. Now I'm not going to remove those now. I'll actually do those off camera because they're a little bit tricky to do. And they're on the train just to try and cushion out uh, movements and whatnot uh, while the watch is being worn in an attempt to increase the accuracy. And that's the bridge off there. And now I'm having a look and just working out what I'm going to take off next. And it's going to be the winding bridge there. It's very important as well um, to keep screwdrivers to the correct profile. So You'll see on this video, I'm able to really not slip with the screwdriver. And the key to that is having it 
having it uh, ground to the right profile. So you don't actually want the blade of the screwdriver to touch the bottom of the screw because that's how they slip out. And you can see there, I'm just taking the bridge off. And I'm going to take off the fourth wheel first. And then the third wheel. And we're just going to take out that um, winding pinion there. And that looks like it's the hack lever. Now we're just taking off the next bridge there. And the escape wheel. And the barrel. Uh, the barrels on these watches are quite unique, and I'll get a better shot of that towards the end. Now, that wheel there is actually held in by the cannon pinion, which is on the date side of the movement. Generally, I tend to like to leave it in and um, remove the cannon pinion on the other side. And you can see the uh, little levers going there. And I've just turned it over to the date side of the movement now. And that was the cannon pinion coming off there. And that's dropped the other wheel down the bottom. Now I'm just trying to work out the best way to take off this uh, date plate. And just gently taking the screws away. And you can see there it's very easy to lose one of those. They're, they're quite small. Now I like to use a toothpick to take these off because sometimes they can spring up. And you'll see there it's not wanting to come up. And I'm not going to try and force it. And it works out that I left a screw in. So just removing that screw now. And then we'll have another go at it. And the reason sometimes they can spring up is that the date disc has actually got spring pressure on it. So sometimes you can take that. Uh, that that's the only thing keeping the date disc in. So sometimes you can lift it up and they will shoot up at you like it did just then. However, because I had the the uh, tweezers in the middle, it stopped it from flying off into somewhere else on the room. And there you can just see the date system for the 44KS. And I'm just working out which part I'm going to take off next. Now that's the date intermediate wheel. Now I've actually just gone to get some Rodico, or in this case I've used uh, the Freud of O option, which is rub off, which is blue. Now the reason I'm using this is that I've just worked out that the date there uses one of the little um, 
one of the little Shepherd Crooks uh, style springs. And they do have a tendency to launch themselves at, at high speed across the room, and I'd probably rather not lose it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some Rodico on the end of it and then gently pull it up. And I'm going to take the date disc off first. And putting the Rodico there just stops it. If it's going to fly away, it's going to stop it. And that's the little uh, date finger there, which is where the spring tension is on. And I'm going to move the Rodico over to the spring there. And then gently lift up the spring. And you can see there it's safely just the Rodico stopped it from, from shooting up. So that's, that's successful. Now the caps on the jewels I'll replace later on. Now that's the main uh, date wheel there and it's got a little spring and finger on it. I was going to pick it up by the spring and finger but decided not to because it can easily be lost. And you'll see there that that whole date wheel actually rotates on a dual post which is fairly uncommon. Um, I've got another watch here that actually has that in there which is a, a Swiss SEMA watch and uh, yeah, at the time when these these were designed, it was um, some watches. It was quite fashionable to put some wheels on a on a dual post. Probably doesn't really increase performance at all, but it is pretty cool. <clears throat> now that's just a little plate that retains the intermediate winding wheel. And that's removed. And now we're going to start looking at the keyless works. So that's the main retention plate for the keyless work system. And we're just going to undo the screws there. Now that date was a little bit sticky, so I tried to move it just with the tweezers and I, I sort of felt not quite confident that it wouldn't just fly away or there'll be something else under it that could potentially have some spring tension on it. So I've just got the toothpick there just to move it around a little bit just to get a feel for what it's doing. And I've just pushed it aside with that. And then we'll take that away. And now we're having a look at the, <clears throat> the keyless work system there. Now that's a setting lever. And that one's for the date. And I've just put some more Rodico on there because that has spring tension on it, the little Shepherd's Crook, crook um, spring. And you can see there, just using the Rodico just to catch it so it doesn't fly off means that we haven't lost it. And you'll see there I'm wearing uh, finger cots, which is normally what I do when working with these because um, once your fingers have touched the plates if you've got any sort of sweat on your fingers it can easily mark them and we've got the uh, that is the set lever spring 
And there's not too much tension on that one, so they tend not to fly off. So I haven't used the Rodico there. <laughs> However, there is one of those, another one of those little springs down the bottom there. So I've just used the uh, Rodico again, and I've just removed the set lever. And that one was a little bit sticky. It, it sits on a post, so and it sits quite tightly on that post. So it's a little bit tricky just to pull up. So I'm just going to get it up a little bit, and then I'm going to lever it up. And I found that a little bit tricky to do with the tweezers. So I've just got a tiny screwdriver there just to push it up a little bit. So I'm just getting the blade under there and then very slightly twisting it. And then just trying to remove that spring there with the... Uh, with the Rodico to cushion it. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. So I'm just pointing at the, uh, the dual post there and just giving you another shot of it. While very cool, uh, they're very hard to find replacements for. So they can be shattered if the watch is dropped. However, um, that's what they are. So you can see there, it's basically a, a round piece of uh, corundum. And there we're just having a closer look at the barrel. Now, the interesting thing to note on these is the barrels actually have jewels uh, built into the barrel, which is fairly uncommon. And what I'm about to do, now the fault with this watch is that the mainspring was broken. So I'm just going to get that barrel open and actually show you what the broken mainspring looks like. Now how the mainspring was broken, I've got absolutely no idea. And I'm just doing that off camera because it's very difficult to do on camera. And there you have it. So you can see the broken spring there. And you can see a little bit of uh, lubricant left in there as well. The Japanese watches tend to use a, an oil that has uh, molybdenum in it. And molybdenum helps with, with uh, lubrication even when the oil is dried out, which is pretty common on most of the Seiko watches. So there you have it. That's a complete teardown of a 44 King Seiko movement. And um, I'll have one up soon on a 6139 as well, which I've recorded, but I've just got to do the narration for. So thanks for watching. And uh, there's another shot of the train bridge there, which just shows you the uh, engraving on the top of it. So thanks for watching and please subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll have some more videos out very soon. Thank you.